Hello guys, good morning. Now, my name is Santosh Mehra. You can see right up there. So you can see my name. Now, I am a qualified chartered accountant. I will be taking up the topic of financial reporting for you. Now, this concept of financial reporting, we will come to it. But fundamentally, let's understand that all those people who are viewing this video are successful in clearing your CA inter or your IP level so far. Now, from here starts your challenge for preparing your mind for your CFI. Now, it is not significantly different from something which you have already done in your CA inter or your in your IPCC level. But however, you need to understand that someone who is relating your accounting with financial reporting, the first thing I will put a break to you. Accounting was a pure practical paper which had only an element of theory in it. On the other way around, if I talk about a concept like financial reporting, which is your first paper of your CA final, I would say this is 70% theory, 30% practical. So, am I looking at another theory paper like law or audit or any other subject? Absolutely not. That is where CA finance, financial reporting stands out. It stands out because this is a theory paper which requires a student to have a practical application of the topic. So that means whenever we deal with financial reporting, you are not just going to mug up the standard. No, no mugging up the standard, no trying to buy heart the standard completely, not at all necessary. As far as your CA final financial reporting is concerned, the, the member who is testing you or the question paper examiner who is going to test you, is only going to test you on your practical expertise of the topic. That means your application of the concept is necessary. I don't have to remember is and an of the paragraph, not at all necessary. Only its practical application is what you need to remember. So this is the first foremost thing that I will drive on your CA final perspective. In your CA final, please do not relate your accounting topic of your CA inter to your financial reporting topic of your CA final. They are quite distinct from each other. One is where you done accounting in your CA inter, which was a 70 to 80 percent practical paper. But on the other hand, when you look at CA final financial reporting, you will find that this topic is 70 to 80 percent theory based. Yes, is there are there pr practical problems in it? Ample problems are available, but only thing that you have to remember here is you will be coming across this paper as a significantly a theory paper and very little on the practical side. But when I said theory, no mugging up of the concept, all that he'll require you to do is practically apply that paragraph and that is sufficient. Practical application is what is being tested. Now, question will be, what should I expect from this topic? What is my expectation from this topic? What should I expect from these videos which are gonna, uh, which you will gonna view from here? Remember guys, our expectation from this topic or from this paper will be absolutely based on how the past exams have been held. Along with that, we will have a significant amount of practical, uh, uh, you know, examples which will be considered. Now, I am a diploma in IFRS and I have held or I have dealt with multiple uh, companies in their transition from your IGAP, which was earlier there or whatever you have studied as per your uh, accounting standards earlier, AS1 to AS29. So, those companies which are earlier handling AS1 to AS29, their transition into Indias, I have dealt with. In total, I have dealt with about 17 companies which had an in IFRS application or your, your India's application. This application predominantly started only in the year 2015 onwards and today we are standing in 2021, six years passed by. Now throughout the six periods, the six years, there's a significant developments which have happened. New standards got added, certain earlier standards got deleted. So a lot of, uh, a lot of happening is around as far as your India's is concerned. We have new standards like India's 115, 116, which are basically revenue recognition and lease standards, which have come in replacing the earlier standards. So this aspect of your account, uh, you, your India's is not like your earlier standards. Earlier standards were static. 
there was no significant improvement in the concept but here under indias we have been evidencing in the last couple of years significant amount of changes which have been developed now my expectation from this topic is exactly to deal with what is available as far as your syllabus is concerned is your syllabus covering the entire indias no it covers only 90% of the indias there is about 10% of the indias which is not dealt under your syllabus i will name them but i'm not going to discuss about them someone is interested in knowing those standards you can very well uh, have a download of those those standards from your mca portal or your from your ica portal you can definitely read it they're simple standards but they have been excluded from your syllabus now let's see what is the expectation of the examiner when you are approaching this paper i would say that this paper is probably the most important paper i'll tell you why now you will say every faculty is going to say the same thing about each of their subject absolutely right but however from my perspective i will consider this as a little more important because this will be the first paper that you will be handling after your ca inter examinations the ca inter examinations probably after 2 to 2 and a half years at least after your ca inter exams you will be approaching your ca final exam significant amount of gap after a good gap where you have undergone a practical training under a qualified chartered accountant once again coming back to your books sticking to your books right back from your office and then writing an exam itself is a difficult task because you have got used to the you know office pattern over the last couple of years and now if i am basically looking at coming back in the form of an exam pattern it might sound a little bit difficult number number 2 the other important point which i want to drive is just give me a second so yes guys sorry for the interruption so when i'm talking about your ca final paper as far as financial reporting i'll consider it as important because it's the first paper in a particular group of four papers that you're going to approach if the first paper is a super hit then you will carry a enormous amount of confidence moving forward into your subsequent exams enormous amount of confidence but if you basically not been able to crack the first paper to your satisfaction because results are only known after a particular period of time but after you come out of the exam there come there happens to be a confidence a confidence that i have done this exam really well now if you lack this particular confidence then that will be one of the biggest problem that you might get so that is the reason why i would consider your ca final financial reporting to be one of the very important thing now let's see what exactly is the discussed as a part of your syllabus now when we are looking at our syllabus guys once again yeah once when we are looking at our syllabus guys the first thing that you need to understand that this standard or this particular paper is going to cover every indias possible it is only revolving around our indias so your earlier accounting standards which you have dealt earlier these are no longer required so our understanding is completely based on indias that indias is quite different from your accounting standards yes and no few standards are significantly different if you compare your as9 revenue recognition standard with your indias 115 which is also a revenue standard you will observe significant amount of differences if you look at a standard like uh, as10 which dealt with property plan and equipment or fixed assets compared with indias 116 you will find that it is about 60 to 70 percent similar 30% there do exist certain differences if you look at leases which you have covered as per your as 17 and compare with it indias 116 then you oh sorry as 19 compared with your indias 116 you will come across significant amount of differences only 50% of the topics are common but however if you come up with topics like cash flow statement it is significantly same if you come across operating segments significantly same if you come across something like eps significantly the same standard so the standards are 
the same in certain ways but also have a typically a different angle or might be completely new to us when we are coming to India's. Now, let's have this topic first of all. What is this financial reporting? What am I talking about? What is the discussion going for? Guys, always remember guys, before we learn something, first of all, we should know what we are learning. Before we learn something, it is important to know what you are learning. So, as far as CA final first paper, paper one financial reporting is concerned, what are you people going to learn now? The thing that we will be learning as a part of your financial reporting paper is basically certain amount of Indians. Your Indians, when I talk about, we will have something like this, broadly classification, a broad amount of classification I'll put into the first set of standards are Indias which are related to assets. First topic that we will start with is all your Indias which are related to assets. What Indias are related to assets? The Indias which is related to assets are Number one, India 16, the primary standard. Number two, India 38, again another very primary standard. Number three, India 40. These three standards are significantly having similar paragraphs but deal with different concepts. What concepts do they deal with? 16 deals with property, plant and equipment. It deals with property, plant and equipment. This is the first standard that it deals with and one of the very very important standard because it forms the basis for the other two standards in days 38 and in days 40. What does your in days 38 and 40 deal with? 38 deals with intangible assets while your 40 deals with investment property. Investment property. Remember guys, when I talk about India 16, 38 and 40, you might start somewhere relating to, to your accounting standards. If you start relating to your accounting standards, then let me tell you, you would have related this to your AS10, which you dealt as per your accounting standard. Intangible assets, you would have related it to AS26. Absolutely right. But however, Corresponding to investment property, there is no particular standard at all. There is no standard which is comparable to your investment property because this standard happens to be a completely new standard. However, it will draw a lot of its parallels from India 16 and 38, but there is no corresponding standard in your accounting standards per se. That is not all for your assets. We will also deal with India's 2, which you might have guessed is nothing but your inventories. Yes, very similar to your AS2 as well. No significant differences as far as inventory is concerned. Then I will go into the next concept of India's 116, which is nothing but your leases significantly different but common to the extent of one lease which is finance lease. Next going into concept number 6. India is 36 which deals with impairment of assets. Again this is not new. It was already there even under accounting standards as well. So, somewhere similar. Let me write the comparable standards. In AS2, I think you have already identified this as comparable to AS2. 
Lease is comparable to your AS19, but though they are not the same, there's significant amount of difference. I'm just writing comparable standards. Impairment under AS28, very common to your India 36 as well, to the extent they do uh, work on a similar lines, but they are different in their own ways. I will introduce a very important and genuinely a very new standard. This standard is very new. There is no corresponding standard in your accounting standards. And this deals with non-current assets held for sale. Continuation and discontinued operations. Non current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Now, guys, there is no corresponding standard to your non current assets held for sale, but there is a corresponding standard only to this part of. Discontinued operations, which in your AS24 has been dealt as discontinuing operation. Only to the extent of discontinued operation, I have a corresponding standard. But please do understand that there is no corresponding standard as far as your non-current assets held for sale is concerned. Non-current assets held for sale is pretty much a new standard, has never been dealt under any other earlier standards. Clear? One more very similar standard which does relate to the assets, which also has a corresponding standard under AS, is your India 23. Very similar to your accounting standard, which is AS 16. What was AS 16 talking about? Very important standard from your CA inter perspective also, because it was dealing with something called as borrowing cost was dealing something called as borrowing cost. Guys, this is more or less similar to what we have dealt under AS16, but I wouldn't say that it is exactly the same. There are certain changes which you should know, but at the same time, it is not completely an alien standard to us. It is not Greek and Latin. It is very much English which you have already dealt under your CA inter. These eight standards which I have named here are the standards which relate to assets. The first and the primary point of our discussion will be around this standard, which deals with India 16, 38, 40, 2, 116, 36, 105, and 20. These are the eight standards. Moving forward. Now that we have seen assets, let's look at liabilities as well. India is relating to liabilities guys if you remember even among your accounting standards there were very limited accounting standards which are dealing with liabilities similar is the case even with indians liabilities very few standards are applicable and to name only two standards are applicable to liabilities one standard is India is 19 and the other standard is India is 37. Both the standards have a corresponding previous accounting standards as well, AS as well. This was AS 15 corresponding to India is 19 and this was AS 29 which was relating to India 37. So now you might have guessed what is the name. India 19, which is AS 15, deals with employee benefits. I don't know if you have covered it earlier or not under AS 15, but this happens to be one of the very important standards under the India 37, similar is the name under AS 29 as well. Provisions. Contingent assets and contingent liabilities.
contingent assets and contingent liabilities which is your india's 37 so we, these are the two standards which relate to your liabilities these two standards are not new to us these names we have already dealt with even under as as well whether you read those standards or not irrespective we will make sure that we understand these two standards very much because these two standards happen to be one of the very important standards especially when i discuss about india's 19 employee benefits by itself is a very important standard regular questions have been arising from it even when we had an as 15 applicable even when there is an india's 19 applicable you come across that this standard has been significantly tested as far as your exam is concerned clear now once we are done with excess and liabilities then we'll have to le learn about certain very important aspects which deal with items in financial statements in days on items which impact or impacting financial statements in days on items which impact financial statements what are these items which impact financial statements these standards which impact financial statements are broadly classified only into two items one such standard is called as india's 12 other one is called as india's 21 both these standards had a corresponding accounting standard before which was nothing but AS 22 one of the very important standards even under accounting standards and one of the very common standard AS 11 your India's 12 dealt with income tax just as your AS 22 it was actually accounting for taxes on income dealt under AS 22 but it will be known as income tax under India's 12 name change but topic more or less the same but approach completely different. There is nothing which is similar to AS22 and India's 12 because the approach in identifying the item which impacts the financial statement itself is different. The approach itself is different. However, your India's 21 and AS11, somewhere I would say 90% are going in line with each other. 90% they'll go in line with each other. A little bit of addition is there as far as India's 21 is concerned. India's 21 deals with effects for changes in foreign exchange rates exchange rates change on a daily basis so that is discussed the effect of those changes on its impact on the financial statements discussed as far as India's 21 is concerned, you can compare this to your AS11, 90% is the same. Now, once we are done with this, we will have to go into presentation standards, disclosure standards. These two are very, very important standards. India's relating to Presentation of financial statements. How the financial statements or certain aspects of financial statements are presented are also discussed. Because predominantly presentation of financial statements should be discussed as per the statute. Like Schedule 3 of Companies Act. It deals with presentation of financial statements. But however, India's also has a certain standards which correspondingly relate to uh, presentation of financial statements. What are these India's? India's one, the name itself is presentation of financial statements.
in this 34 and in this 7. All three have corresponding standards according to ICI, but I will differ. I will differ. I'll tell you why. In this one deals with presentation of financial statements. This standard presentation of financial statements will give a minimum requirements of any enterprise to present in its financial statements. Presentation of financial statements. This standard prescribes minimum requirements. The bare minimum things that you want to present or that you expect in the financial statements is given under in this one. That is minimum required. But remember schedule 3 of Companies Act will always prevail over this particular standard in this one. In this 34 deals with interim financial state. In this 7 deals with cash flow statement which is also a part of your financial statements. Guys, the corresponding accounting standards, I can write AS3 here, cash flow statement. I can write AS25 here, as far as interim financial statements is concerned. I am forced to write AS1. I am forced to write AS1. But according to me, AS1 is not a comparable standard. According to me, AS1 is not a comparable standard. Reason very simple guys. Reason is that AS1 predominantly deals with disclosure of accounting policies. It is only disclosure of accounting policies that we have to look at as far as AS1 is concerned. But if you look at this part of India AS1, it deals with presentation of financial statements. Now guys, disclosure of accounting policies is only a small part of your financial statements. India's one has a much larger ambit. It has a much larger ambit than what you are talking about as far as your, your AS1 is concerned. So remember guys that this standard, though I am forced to write it is a comparable to your AS1, but I would not really compare it because it is significantly different. Clear? Let's move into disclosure. What about the disclosure standard? Days relating to disclosures. Guys, disclosures is an essential element of financial state statements right now guys when i talk about disclosures which are relate the index which relates to the disclosures then let me put it like this certain disclosures which are dealt under your accounting standards are predominantly given like this your index 108 which is having a comparative standard i will talk about it In days 24. And finally, in days 33. What is your 108 dealing with? What is your 24 dealing with? And 33 dealing with? All the three standards have a corresponding standard under your accounting standard and more or less they are similar. A17, which earlier we called it as segment reporting. Now I will call it with the name as operating segments. Name change, little bit of a change as far as the standard is concerned. But however, predominantly it will remain the same. It was segment reporting under AS17. I am calling it as operating segments under India's 108. AS24 deals with related party disclosures. Related 
पार्टी डिस्क्लोजर्स Your corresponding standard under your accounting standards is AS 18. India is 33. Corresponding standard in the AS is your AS 20, which deals with earnings per share or your EPS. Guys, this is where under these standards, these three standards which deal with deal with disclosures. you will find that very few changes have been applied very few changes have actually occurred as far as your indias is concerned you might say sir as 17 name itself you changed it yes name i changed but as far as reporting the segments is concerned the reporting framework will remain the same there is no significant difference as far as the reporting framework is concerned the disclosures also predominantly remain the same definitions related to related party might change But the disclosures will predominantly relate the same. Clear? So these standards have not undergone a significant change. There is no significant change there. Let's get into the other standards. we will deal with indias 20 corresponding to this standard accounting standard does appear which is nothing but your as 12 which is nothing but your garment grants but a slight change is there as far as the name is concerned because it talks about accounting for garment grant which is very similar to as 12 accounting for common grants and additional it talks about disclosure of garment assistance this is the only change as far as the standard is concerned however approach also is significantly different but you can compare it to as12 but there is nothing to be compared because there is a significant different approach which will apply even to your accounting as well so accounting for garment grants and disclosure of garment assistance now this standard you can compare to as12 but significant difference as far as your approach is concerned now if i move further one second guys Yes, guys. So, significant other standards that we will have to look at. India is one one five. One of the most important standards that you will come across. It deals with revenue from contracts with customer. guys you might confuse with it and you might say that this is so simple as similar as as9 is concerned absolutely wrong there is a significant change as far as your revenue recognition is concerned there is a complete different approach that we will follow in indias 115 one of the most important standards don't be afraid even if we have a 9 to 10 hours of discussion only about the stock 9 to 10 hours of discussion goes into revenue recognition that is how small of a things indias 115 discuss about every small minute thing is discussed as a part of your topic your indias 115 it talks also about service concession agreements we will also discuss about it i wouldn't say it is comparable but if you want to compare from any accounting standard then it is as9 as9 is a simple two and a half page standard 
India is 115. On the contrary, including all the NHS is about 83 or 84 sites. So, where is 2.5? Where is 83, 84? You need to understand. That is how uh, depth India is 115 goes into as far as your revenue recognition is concerned. Clear? Now, we will look at further more standards as well. We will talk about India is 101. Under other standards, I will talk about India is 101. It's a peculiar standard, guys. I'll give the name. You will tell me what is the corresponding standard in AS. First time adoption of India's. Like you might have already guessed, there is nothing such standard which existed under AS because it's the first time adoption of India of AS. That is a transition which happens from your earlier set of accounting standards into your India's. If an enterprise is adopting or if an enterprise is transiting, then the exemptions or certain relaxations which are applicable are contained under India's 101. Clear? India's 101 is a peculiar standard. Please make sure that you people have a good understanding of 101 because 101 is the first standard which I will apply to any enterprise which is undergoing a transition to your India's. Similarly, I will come across another standard called as 114. This 114 standard deals with regulatory deferral accounts. Deals with regulatory deferral accounts. This standard obviously does not have a corresponding in days, but remember, this is no longer included in your portion as well. You no longer have to discuss about India's 114 because it is excluded specifically from your syllabus. India's 114 dealing with regulatory deferral accounts has no uh, uh, application as far as your syllabus is concerned, but this standard does apply to certain enterprises. I dealt with a company which deals with regulatory deferral accounts. So do not eliminate the standard for practical experience purposes. Syllabus excluded. But if you want to understand India's perfectly, then somewhere at some point of time in your life, you will come across the standard called as regulatory deferral accounts, which you have to deal with under India's 114. It's only excluded from the syllabus. That's it. Is excluded from this. Okay. Similarly, we have few more standards coming up. Industry specific indices. Industry specific indices. What is this industry specific indices? Certain indices are only applicable to specific industries. They don't apply to every enterprise as a whole. What standards do I come across here? I will come across indices 41. I will also come across indices 104. I will also come across indices 106. Forty one deals with agriculture. It deals with agriculture. India's one or four deals with insurance contracts. While your one or six will deal with Exploration of minerals or mineral rights.
there is no corresponding accounting standard in all the three of them but however 104 and 106 have been excluded from your syllabus it is specifically excluded from syllabus so you don't have to deal with these standards now let's number and check how many standards have we covered so far am i trying to say that this is the end of the list absolutely no i'll give few more to be included in the list but until now check how many standards have we included in our syllabus so far so 10 standards which related to assets and liabilities your number 11 and 12 deals with items affecting financial statements Presentation related standards, we have three, which is nothing but 13, 14 and 15. Then we had disclosure related standards, three standards, which is 16, 17 and 18. Then we had other standards, 19, 20 and 21. Similarly, we had India specific standards. Out of which only one is applicable 22 standards we have seen so far is applicable as far as your portion is concerned three standards i've excluded so if you include even those three standards 25 but syllabus covers 22 standards so far from here i will talk about certain standards which have a lot more practical application than theory part these 22 standards i will say 70 to 75 percent is theory 20 to 25 percent we will solve problems which is a practical understanding or practical application of the theory but apart from this 22 we will come across the next set of standards where you will have 75 percent of practical application 25 percent of theory what are these standards standards relating to financial instruments mark my words guys there is no paper without this particular standard being tested no question paper has ever come up it will never come up this standard is compulsory to appear in any question paper and it deals with these standards in days 32 deals with 109 and 107 32 deals with definitions of financial instrument one out nine deals with classification measurement Recognition and derecognition. Recognition and derecognition. One at seven deals with disclosures relating to financial instruments. One at seven is the least important of all. One at nine is the most important of all. One at seven is least important of all. One at nine is the most important of all. So these three standards do not have any earlier accounting standard. At a point of time, they came in 30, 31 and 32. But significant difference is there. They have been withdrawn later on by ICI. So they are no longer available. I cannot compare them with any accounting standards, which is, apply, which, which is applicable as on today's date. Next set of standards are standards. relating to group companies group company is nothing but subsidiaries joint ventures and associates here i will come across is 27 there is 27 in there is 28 India is 110, 
India is 111 and I will also deal with India is 112. Twenty seven deals with separate financial statements. Twenty eight deals with accounting for investments for investment. In associates and joint ventures, one ten deals with consolidation with subsidiary, one eleven deals with joint arrangements. And 112 finally deals with disclosure of interest in other entities. Disclosure of interest in other entities. Now you will say five standards and that too only relating to consolidation how important is this topic this topic again i would say no question paper will come up without this topic but the weightage has significantly come down in the recent times you only find about 8 to 16 marks of weightage on this earlier it was much higher than that but right now you find 8 10 12 16 maximum until there but these topics are dealt in depth about 28 to 30 hours of discussion goes only into these topics. Now, what is a comparable accounting standard then? Comparable accounting standards here I can compare AS21 and here I can compare AS23. AS27, which dealt with joint venture, is no longer available as far as your NDS is concerned. If you want, you can compare it, but there is no corresponding NDS at all. So that AS27 treatment of consolidation as per proportionate consolidation method, that method itself is scrapped off. So that is a significant difference from accounting standard to your NDS out there. So this is standards which relate to group enterprise or group companies. Two more standards that we'll deal with. Two more standards that we'll deal with. One standard is India is 103. Final standard is India is 102. 103 deals with business combination, uh, which I wouldn't say you're wrong if you compare it with AS14. You can compare it with AS14, which dealt with amalgamations, absorptions, and reconstructions. You can compare it but not absolutely right. You cannot say that it is absolutely right. 102 deals with share based payments. Guys, there is no particular accounting standard under previous ICAP which you can compare it with AS and AS 102. Earlier, your share based payments was a part of a guidance note, guidance note of a uh, guidance note for ESOPs to employees. Employee stock option plan was there. Now it has become share based payments, much larger ambit, has been given a separate standard in days 102. Now, few in days, we did not have a corresponding accounting standard. But remember, few accounting standards also do not have a corresponding in days. Few accounting standards do not have a corresponding India's, your AS13 which dealt with investments, your AS13 which dealt with investments, 
does not have another corresponding standard. Clear? Because that standard investments has got now merged with financial instruments which you are dealing as per India's 32, 107 and 109. There is no corresponding standard to that. Your India's 5, sorry, your AS5 which deals with net profit or loss for the period also is not applicable. It is also not applicable. Clear? No India's is corresponding to that accounting standard 5. I will give you a few more standards. Oh wait, let me number so far so that we are not losing a track of it. 22 so far till there and from here let's count it again. 23, 24, 25 which dealt with financial instruments, group companies, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Business combinations 31, share based payments 32, 3 standards eliminated that will make it total 35. Syllabus 32 so far, not done yet, not done yet. I will include certain miscellaneous standards. I wouldn't say that these are important but one has to know these standards. They also had corresponding standards under accounting standards and these Indias are Indias 8 and Indias 10. They are accounting policies and measurement related standards guys. You can call it even with that heading but I call them as miscellaneous standards. Indias 8 deals with accounting policies. Accounting policies, estimates, and errors. Somewhere you can relate it to your AS4 in part. AS5 in part. Events occurring after balance sheet date. Guys, if here you want to compare it, then I would say AS5 and also AS1 because it dealt with accounting policies. So, definition of accounting policies, disclosure requirements, all those which were there under AS1 will now form part of India's 8. Here, India's 10 is a part of my AS4, which is nothing but contingencies and events occurring after balance sheet date. Contingencies, we have merged it with India's 37 or your AS29. So, I am not talking about it. I am only talking about events occurring after balance sheet date. So, number it. This becomes 33. This becomes 34. So, the total standards that we will be having as a part of your syllabus is total 34 standards. But actual number of standards which apply to the enterprises in general sense is 37. Three standards, 104, 104. 106 are not applicable to us as far as our syllabus is concerned. So I'll exclude those standards. There is one more standard which does not apply to us, which is basically a standard which deals with hyperinflation. It is in it is an index which deals with hyperinflation, which is in 39, which is not applicable to us. So it does not even apply to Indian enter enterprises because India is never under a hyperinflation situation. So if you include that, that will be 38 standards in total, but 34 is available or applicable as far as your syllabus is concerned. Now take a deep breath. Think about what did I say so far. Is it practically possible, sir? Is it practically possible that you are expecting me to remember, you are expecting me to remember 34 in days. Guys, our task for the next 60 days or so, where we would be covering at least 200 hours of a session, is to make sure these topics are simple to you. These topics, we will try to make it as simple as possible. I already told you, no mugging up. No mugging up because you don't have to buy hard everything. All that you have to do is understand it and make sure that you are applying it. 
practical application of these in days is what really matters clear so guys i'm not scaring you up front i'm just telling you that this i will try to make i'll put in 100% of effort to make these topics look as simple as possible to you you are going there to write a 100 mark paper and believe me i will make sure that you will appear in the exam to write the entire 100 marks with ease with ease 100 marks you will read you will anyways write it but the, my guarantee is i will make sure my promise to you is i will make sure that you people write this 100 marks or appear to the exam with ease